Do you know the way to make something instantly cooler? Make it fly. Robots, cool. Flying robots, very cool. Skateboards, cool. Hoverboards, well you catch my drift. In fact, pretty much anything can be made cooler if you strap a pair of wings and some rocket boosters. <gasps> Okay, probably a bad idea, but there is one film where they strap wings and rocket boosters onto a soft, fat, white and black thing. If we're gonna catch that guy, you need some upgrades. I'd like to introduce Baymax 2.0. Hello. Baymax wings. Thrusters. And in my extremely biased, highly contestable personal opinion, the coolest things in this film are these. These are airborne wind turbines, and not only is the tech being developed right now, but we could one day see a future like in Big Hero 6. Welcome to Science with Steph, the show where I think way too much about the world around us and then share the best bits with you guys. This week I'm looking at airborne wind. What is it? How does it work? And one day could we be seeing these things flying above our cities like in Big Hero 6? Well, flying wind is actually not a very new concept. The first ever paper that proposed using kites to generate electricity was actually published in 1980 where Miles Lloyd laid out the maths for us. He showed that using a wing or a kite tethered to the ground and flying across the wind could actually generate six to eight times more energy than a conventional wind turbine. You might have actually felt this increased power yourself if you've ever gone kite surfing or sailing and you've gone across the wind, as soon as you start doing that you feel the pull a lot more. Turning this concept into reality in the 1980s though was a long shot. Remember, this was a world before drones, wireless communication, industrial wind energy. It was even before Madonna and she old. But Steph, I hear you ask, how can you generate electricity from things that are flying in the air? Well, in a previous video, I explained how we generate electricity by turning generators. Airborne wind is no different, and there are three types of kites or wings that can be used to generate electricity. The first type is called a lift or yo-yo device. With this type of kite, when you're flying across the wind, you use the lift your fuel to pull a tether that's wrapped around a big drum connected to a generator. The kite pulls and pulls, reeling the tether out and making electricity. Once the tether is fully reeled out, the kite flies into a higher, low resistance state and is reeled back in at a much lower energy. This overall gives net positive power. There's actually a Scottish company I work with called KPS that use two kites at the same time so that when one's generating, the other one's consuming power and you've got smooth power output overall. I'll put information about this type of device down below. The second type is a drag-based device. With this, you have a glider or wing with many generators on board attached to propellers. When the glider is in position to have more than enough lift to stay aloft, the propellers are then run backwards. So instead of giving power to the kite, they're using the wind to power the generators. In fact, it's a cool enough idea that the main company that makes this type of generator, Mechani, has been bought over by Google X. That's the Starshot part of Alphabet which helps make world changing inventions a reality. I'll leave some more information about Mechani and Google X in the description box. And the third type is the lighter and air blimp style device that we see in Big Hero 6. The advantages to these is that they can be deployed anywhere and don't need any sort of advanced control to make sure that they fly safely. Though because they're static and don't fly across the wind, they actually produce a lot less electricity than the other types of devices I've already mentioned. Well that's all well and good, but if wind energy is already cheap and abundant, then why do we even need to research these things that seem to take so much time and effort even to lift off the ground? Both metaphorically and literally. Good question, cynical Seth. The benefits of airborne wind are huge. Firstly, you're accessing winds a lot higher up than conventional wind turbines. Up there, the winds are faster, more persistent and less turbulent, so smoother. This would make the electricity produced much more reliable. More than that though, you're taking out the cost and the weight of the turbines. That's the blades, the tower and the foundations. Which means that you can pretty much build these things anywhere. In fact, the greatest benefit that you see for airborne wind is in far off remote communities and deep waters, where accessing and building large turbines can be really tricky, if not impossible. So if we need to fly these things above big cities where the people are, then who knows, maybe one day we will see a future a bit like Big Hero 6. We might see cities powered by the coolest inventions ever, flying wind turbines.
turbines? Cool. Flying wind turbines? Well, they're just the coolest. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Science with Steph. If you want to see my last episode, you can click here. Or I bring out new videos every Friday. So if you consider subscribing, please click here. All right, thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye. Would cynical Steph wear a Scotland scarf? Probably not. Oh well. This cynical Steph does. <laughs>